Thank you, Dean Pisano. I would like to now introduce our keynote speaker for the evening, Brandon Nixon. Brandon earned his bachelor's degree in computer engineering from UCSD and later pursued an MBA from the Stanford Graduate School of Business. He spent nearly two decades in a variety of executive roles, including at Hewlett Packard and Texas Instruments. As Brandon's career progressed, he became the CEO of Enerdyne Technologies, which was eventually acquired by Viasat. Brandon joined Lytics from Viasat as senior vice president and is now currently the chairman and CEO. Like many Tritons, our keynote speaker is an adventurer. He started his journey right here as a curious and passionate student. Tonight, he joins us to share the importance of staying true to your dreams and taking risk. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Mr. Brandon Nixon. Thank you, Jakob, for that wonderful uh, introduction. It is such an honor for me to be here tonight. Uh, 30 years ago, I was sitting right where you are now, eager to get my diploma and make my mark on this world. So I know very well that the only thing between you and some well-earned graduate celebrations is this ceremony and me. So. <laughs> Please bear with me as I tell you a few stories of what can happen as we go through this grand adventure we call life. But first, let me tell you how I got to UCSD. I grew up playing sports. I was about to enter my sophomore year at another college in Arizona when my basketball coach got a call from the basketball coach here at UC San Diego. He asked, we need a guard who can shoot and get good, get, gets good grades. Know anybody? So the next day, my dad and I are in a pickup truck headed to San Diego. As he drops me off at temporary housing, the totality of my belongings were two boxes, a basketball, and a bike. And as life would have it, the bike got stolen in the first week. <laughs> so now I'm down to two boxes and a ball and no clue. You know that feeling when you're in the ocean and you get hit by a wave and you're tumbling underwater and you don't exactly know which way is up? That's how it felt for me when I came to campus. I had so much to figure out, but something happened early in my life that prepared me for that moment. It happened when I was eight years old and my mother was diagnosed with terminal cancer. For five years in her late 20s and early 30s, I watched her do the most remarkable thing. She lived knowing that she would never see her children go up to do what you're doing now, graduating and embarking on life's journey. She knew she wasn't gonna be around to help us with the big milestones and the big decisions in our lives. So she spent the last few years of her life teaching us to trust our judgment and be confident. Confident that no matter, way, no matter what waves life threw at us, we could figure out how to get our heads above the water before we drown. Trust your judgment, she would say, you'll figure out the rest. And so just like you, I figured out UC San Diego and I graduated in 1987 with a degree in computer engineering from the Jacobs School. But that was only the beginning. Upon graduating, I worked as a programmer. It wasn't long before I found myself questioning the business decisions being made at the company. Decisions that affected the products we as engineers were creating. I figured it was because I wasn't savvy enough or experienced enough or I simply didn't understand the business rationale. Or maybe I was just too young. Although I loved writing code and I still miss it today, I decided to join the dark side. <laughs> I went into sales and marketing at another technology company so that I could learn. After two years of that, I still didn't quite get it. Either I didn't understand or the business decisions weren't good and I decided that it was I didn't understand. Now, the comfortable thing would have been, of course, to keep quiet, go back to my work and take my comfortable salary, let the executives figure out the rest. But that's not what we're taught here, here at UCSD. As engineers, we're taught that it's our duty to question assumptions, to speak up, when something doesn't seem right, to act when we see a problem. Seek out answers and solutions even when it makes the situation 
uncomfortable. These are the lessons that, we, that come out of the Quebec Bridge tragedies. The lack of courage to make the situation uncomfortable led to unnecessary tragedy and avoidable loss of life. This tells us that we have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable in life. Because when we get too comfortable, we're not pushing the envelope. We're not learning. We're not doing great things. I've always loved the phrase that warm sense of everything going well is the body temperature at the center of the herd. And the center of the herd is not where we want to spend our lives. So I left the herd. I quit my job and went to graduate business school. My wife, Janine, who was building a wonderful career as a PR executive, also quit her job as we moved away from San Diego. The economy was horrible at the time, so she ended up working behind the jewelry counter at Nordstrom to put us through school. What an incredible sacrifice she made as we both jumped into the deep end of the pool, hoping we could find our way to the top of the water before we drowned. After business school, I joined a technology business. They helped build it up and then sold it before I went to work for a private equity company in San Francisco. Now, private equity is the industry that funds companies before they go public. It's a wonderful career and can be quite lucrative. And my timing could not have been more perfect. Every year, my salary kept going up and up and up. Now, for a guy who started with two boxes and a basketball, that seemed like a pretty good thing. But as time wore on, the fog of who I was and what I'd wanted to do with my life began to clear. And I realized that private equity was an individual sport, and I love team sports. Win or lose, I love being in the battle with a team of people trying our best to change the world. So at the ripe old age of 39, I had finally figured out what I wanted to do with my life, and I left the job that nobody leaves. I knew if I didn't leave private equity right then, I would never leave. The stakes would be too high, and I would spend my life making money, not making a difference. I remember building up the courage to tell Janine that I wanted to do this, and it would mean taking a 75% cut in pay. And her remarkable response without hesitation was, let's go. So again, we jumped. I took over one of the portfolio companies we just invested in. I'd never done anything like that before, and I probably wasn't qualified. After a month, I realized that to save the company, I needed to aggressively reduce expenses. So I focused the business and made some hard decisions to cut expenses and tighten our belts, both at the company and at home. For years, Janine and I moved money around on credit cards to pay for our expanding family. We'd find cards that had interest-free grace periods for balance transfers, and we'd just move our debt around, hoping that someday we could solve it. Parents, for the record, I do not recommend this form of personal <laughs> cash management. But five years later, we sold the businesses for well over $100 million. The payday was nice because it helped put a stop to the traveling debt, but it was the team effort and the challenge and the discomfort that was the real reward. I could not get enough of that feeling. I had figured it out. I joined Lytix in 2008. Prior to my arrival, the company had seven straight quarters of $5 million per quarter loss. And at the time, it had $8 million in the bank. That meant we had a quarter and a half to figure it out. So why would I join? Well, the market was enormous and the product was terrific, and there was an element of joining something greater than myself, which was saving lives. Unfortunately, at the time, just like the Quebec Bridge tragedies, we were just going with the flow. We weren't willing to embrace the discomfort of doing what we knew was right. So in 2009, we changed that. We focused our business on our core markets, we began holding ourselves accountable, and once again, we reduced expenses or we reduced salaries to save the company. This was the same challenge as before, just on a much, much bigger scale. 
Within two quarters, we went from bleeding $5 million per quarter to making $2 million in positive cash. Over the last decade, our company's value has gone from essentially worthless to nearly $2 billion today. We now find ourselves the largest subscription software company in San Diego, and our technology saves thousands of lives a year by preventing commercial vehicle collisions. While leading a multi-billion dollar company is rewarding, again, it's the challenge, the teamwork, and the discomfort to me that is far more rewarding. When I think back on all the big decisions I've made, starting with the one to come to school here at UC San Diego, I realize they all have one thing in common. I've always pursued things that interested me, even if it meant give, giving up being comfortable and diving into situations where I didn't know the outcome. In most every decision, I was probably not qualified to do what I was trying to do, but Janine and I would jump anyway. The secret I found is to start early in life because with age, it gets harder. It gets harder to take that leap of faith. As we grow older, it gets to the point where we can find ourselves paralyzed because the stakes are simply too high. And we tell ourselves we can't afford the risk. And this is where regret can creep in. Every time I jump, it was always harder than I expected. It would take longer than I expected. The pools were deeper than I expected. And certainly, the waves were stronger than I expected. But ultimately, things would work out. And I came to realize the more effort I put into something, the happier I would be. And so I figured out it was the inputs more than the outputs that were life's rewards. This was the brilliance of my mom's advice. Just by jumping in, you're more than halfway there. As my mom said, trust your judgment, you'll figure out the rest. There's a song by Billy Joel about people who stay far away from doors. They hear a voice in the hall outside and hope that it just passes by. Some people are so afraid of what could happen, they do nothing. But I can tell you the reward on the other side of that fear is remarkable. So my hope for you is that you answer every knock, you open every door, dive into every pool that interests you, and take on every wave that's going to knock you over. Trust your judgment, you'll figure out the rest. Along the way, never waver from what you know is right, and somehow, somehow, find a way to get comfortable being uncomfortable. It's an amazing way to go through life. You are the future leaders of our businesses, of our community, of our country, and of our world, and you deserve nothing less. So congratulations to the Jacob School of Engineering class of 2018. I look forward to seeing many of you in the deep end of the pool as we struggle together to get our heads above the water. Thank you.